Hello everybody, this is Pastor Andy coming uh, to you from the depths of clown world. Uh, I thought I would uh, do uh, start doing a, you know, a Sunday sermon to help you save your souls from eternal damnation. Uh, but no, seriously, um, I had this uh, thing on my mind. Uh, that I wanted to get off my mind, and I think the image in the video uh, will give you a clue as to what I wanted to talk about. Basically, in 2000, uh, 2020, uh, I was uh, in my neighborhood, riding around my neighborhood, and this was right around the time the George Floyd thing had, you know, blown up. And here in Canada, it kind of, you know, it blew up here too, where we would have, um, you know, these protests just, you know, marching up and down the main streets of downtown Toronto to protest, you know, the, the, uh, the tens of millions, gorillions, quintillions of black men that were being killed by the police, even though that doesn't really happen here in, in Canada, but this movement had like permeated itself through onto Canada from the States, right? Because when you have a bunch of people who have nothing going on in their lives and they're utterly empty, they feel the need to, you know, feel, uh, give, give, find purpose. You know what I mean? So instead of, you know, uh, starting families and finding purpose that way or instead of getting really into their careers and finding purpose that way. No, they find purpose by being perpetually offended, right? And offended by things that aren't really happening. The reality is, is black men are not being mowed down in the streets uh, by the police and their tens of millions and gorillions and however many that you know, these idiots think they are. The reality is it's just a handful of unarmed black men who are killed by the police, whereas the police are far more often to be killed by black men. But that's neither here nor there for the purpose of this sermon. No, this sermon is more about the churches. So I was riding around in my neighborhood and I noticed a lot of churches were having these blacks, Black Lives Matter banners hanging on them or, or the rainbow flag hanging on them. And, and it seemed odd to me. So I ruminated on it for a little while. And this is what I think is happening. I think that, there, well, it could be two things. Uh, I think that Churches are so desperate to find a congregation that they're hanging out these banners out there to try and lure some leftists into the church and grow their congregation that way. And, you know, these people, the, the, the people that hang these banners on churches, like, I don't know if they know this, but both Black Lives Matter and the rainbow flag are not, they're antithetical to religion. They are Marxist in origin, all right? Marxists don't believe in, in religion. That's, uh, Marxists want to destroy religion among the, the many things they want to destroy. They want to destroy the family. They want to destroy private property. They basically want to destroy society so they could take over, like they did with the communist bloc in, in, the, uh, in the 20th century, where it was 70 years of destroying everything um, and really not really providing people a better, uh, you know, I mean, they did provide a better quality of life as compared to when the czars were around. But I mean, that's not really saying much. If you compare it with Western standards, the quality of life that they were providing was nowhere near what we had in the West, in the democratic West. But that's uh, a video for another time. But getting back to these churches, you know, like I wonder if they're really thinking that if we hang these banners, we'll get some some liberals to come to the, these people. Don't go to church, 
Okay, know your audience. Okay, people who go to church don't adhere to the rainbow flag. They don't adhere to Black Lives Matter. People who go to church do not like those. Those two symbols are symbols of Marxist encroachment in our society. So, uh, you know, the, the church would be better served to reach out to people who are more most likely to go uh, to go to church, you know, make an outreach to communities that are more likely to attend church. Because I tell you, liberals on Sundays ain't going to go to church, man. They're going to read their stupid uh, establishment magazines, you know, their their highbrow intellectual magazines, and, and think they're being enlightened when they're just being indoctrinated. Liberals don't do shit like that. Liberals are, are contemptible people. Uh, um, you know, who who don't, uh, you know, they don't go to church. You know, they, they're, they're secularists. You know, they, they've bought the, uh, they've bought the propaganda over the years that the church, you know, is, is corrupt and this and that and the other thing. Right? So, I don't, you're not appealing to liberals by hanging up Black Lives Matter flags and, and, and rainbow flags. What you're doing is you're actually turning away people who would go to church. You know what? I would go to church, but I wouldn't attend one of these these woke churches that's going to preach to me about Black Lives Matter. And, 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 like, and people who, um, who know anything about what's going on in society would know that... You know, these movements are Marxist movements that are bent on destroying Western society and the church with it. So, like, it would be like, uh, it would it would be like hanging up a banner that's saying, uh, Christians for Satan, you know what I mean? Like, why would you do this? So, the question goes to these, these organizations who are hanging up these flags, or are they really that... Um, are they really that uninitiated into what's going on or have they been infiltrated by crypto Marxists? And I'll explain what a, a crypto Marxist is in another video, but have they been infiltrated by a movement of info uh, of, uh, crypto Marxists who are bent on slowly destroying the church from within. Because uh, there was a woman named Bella Dodd. She was a communist back, I can't remember exactly when, but earlier in the 20th century, and they, they admitted that they had planted like thousands of, of, of men into the church to destroy it from the inside. So, um... Yeah, I, I'm really at a loss here at why churches, but as you, as you can see with this church, they, they hung up the flags, then shortly thereafter they sold the building, so it didn't work out too well for them. So maybe the churches should focus on building communities where they're not just, you know, separated from the community that, you know, you only go to like uh, on a few, a few occasions during the year and maybe during a wedding or something like that. Maybe if they built a community, maybe if they had that, that space and they don't pay tax on, they created daycares and places where the community could congregate uh, as opposed to like once a, a week or uh, once, you know, uh, during Easter or once during Christmas. You know, if they did that sort of thing, that sort of outreach, what if they had like um, after school clubs for kids where they could go and do things? Um, if they had, um, you know, outreach for, for young people who are having issues with depression and anxiety and a system in that way. Like, you know, like do something like that where you build a community as opposed to, uh, you know, just doing the most laziest thing and just hanging up a banner for Black Lives Matter who is completely antithetical to the Christian doctrine to, be, to begin with. So, uh, yeah, I, I don't know if it's unintentional out of ignorance or if it's intentional out of malice, whatever it is. Um, it's sad to see that these churches are slowly dying and they've missed a great opportunity, especially in these times where, you know, 
where daycare is so inex- so expensive and where it's it's just the nuclear family, right? And, and parents don't have grandparents to, to drop the kids off to, where, you know, they, they miss an opportunity to create these daycares where they can create revenue and create a community and but instead you know they don't bother to do things like, i don't know if it's a zoning thing or a licensing thing where you need to have a certain license to have a daycare but it's a perfect opportunity um to you know build a community you know but whatever uh it's just something that was weighing on my mind that i had to get off my mind and my my mind is much lighter now so thank you so end of the lesson go enjoy your sundays thanks for listening as as if you listen all the way to the end thanks for listening all the way to the end and uh, give it a like or a share or a comment and uh we'll see you tomorrow when we uh take on martin luther king oh yeah you're gonna love that one